Taiwan Dailies, first and foremost news from Southeast Asia. Hello, welcome to Duran ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. On ASEAN Daily, we will bring you daily updates and commentaries on issues and events that are impacting this region. I'm your host Arlene Tan, and today on Monday, 21st of March, 2016, we will bring you the latest politics and current affairs news from Southeast Asia. Our top story today, Independence v4 political polls in Vietnam. Singer-songwriter Mai Khoi is among a growing number of Vietnamese activists and celebrities who are running as independents this month for the Vietnam National Assembly. Mai Khoi said that her growing interest in social justice and youth issues expressed through her songs would make her an appealing candidate for many young Vietnamese who are not otherwise interested in politics. She launched her hit song, Vietnam, an optimistic ode to the country's landscape and people. But the rest of her list of songs include one called Cuff in Freedom that addresses hot-button social issues such as corruption, gender inequality and official restrictions on artistic expression. Vietnam first allowed independent candidates in 2002 and just seven of the few hundred have won seats in the National Assembly in three elections since according to an analysis by the United Nations Development Programme. These independents have typically been business people or academics who are party members or have deep connections to the government, and most have been weeded out well before the voting began by a complex vetting process that the party controls, according to analysts. But... My Khoi, like many other independents this year, is not a party member. They are in fact writers, lawyers, educators and even a stand-up comedian. According to Edmund J. Maleski, a Vietnam specialist and a professor of political economy at Duke University, before this, the National Assembly wasn't so much part of the national consciousness. But this year, crop of independence draws from a, wa- a far wider cross-section of society. Professor Malansky said that the independents were younger than ever and many were discussing their platforms with a degree of openness that is rare in the one-party state. Debates in the National Assembly have become livelier in recent years. And the rise of non-traditional candidates like Mai Khoi may reflect a growing interest among ordinary Vietnamese in domestic politics. Vietnam initially allowed independent candidates as part of broader changes that were partly intended to allow the Communist Party to check the power of the Prime Minister. This is according to Paul Schuller, a professor of political science at the University of Arizona, who is writing a book about the National Assembly. Professor Schuller said that it would be interesting to see how the candidates fare. It would signal a noticeable break from the past. But he added that independence did not represent a fundamental challenge to Vietnam's political system because the Communist Party's candidate vetting process still granted senior officials significant power to decide who could run for office. Let's move on to the next news. Indonesia may replace Thailand as the automotive production hub in ASEAN. According to Marcus Asherer, head of the global automotive sector of Ipsos Consulting, he said that this is evident from the output trend of vehicle production, policies and infrastructure, which continue to undergo improvements followed by increasing production capacity, domestic consumption and export volume. To date, Thailand is the largest automotive producer in the Southeast Asia region with annual production of 2 million cars compared to Indonesia, which manufactured 1.1 million units every year. 
However, the production gap between the two countries is expected to half by the end of 2020. Indonesia exported some 23% of its car production in 2015, while Thailand sold some 55% of its domestic production abroad. In a bid to become ASEAN's leading car production centre, Indonesia needs to enhance its production capacity, such as increase direct investment to 2.6 billion US dollar for the construction of new factories and improve production abilities of existing factories. The Ipsos report highlighted that Indonesia still has considerable potential thanks to its domestic consumption market of 250 million people. This will encourage investors to harbour expectations for solid sale growth. Meanwhile, Chukyat Wongti Virat, a senior consultant manager at Ipsos Bangkok said that Indonesia's business climate has not brought significant benefits to the automotive industry. According to the World Bank ranking on the ease of doing business, Indonesia is placed in 109th spot among 198 countries, which means that Thailand stands at 49 and doing way better. Indonesian government definitely is setting a higher target to reach at the 40th position by 2018. Marcus said that the current conditions in the country show a positive trend, such as easing regulations on foreign ownership and simplified licensing production. But definitely more needs to be done by the Jokowi administration to ease doing business in the country. On another news, Ridwan T denied entry into Singapore. Controversial columnist from Malaysia Dr. Ridwan T. Abdullah has complained that Singapore immigration officials treated him like a terrorist when they recently refused to allow him into the Republic Island. In his column on Malay language daily Sinaharian, the Chinese Muslim convert said his photograph and thumbprint were taken at Singapore's land checkpoint at Woodlands when he and a friend recently travelled to the neighbouring country on a personal business. He detailed his horrified experience in his column title Know the True Enemies of Islam. After more than two hours of questioning, he said that he received a letter saying he was not allowed to go there. There was no reason given but he was confident that it was due to his comments on the ultra kiasu. He said it was no loss not being able to go to Singapore but added he just want to remind how dangerous the quote unquote ultra kiasu are. Ultra Kiasu is a term T constantly uses on the Democratic Action Party, or DAP, a predominantly Chinese opposition party. But he has also applied it to other groups, including Christians and Malaysia's ethnic Chinese. Ridwan T has repeatedly criticized the Chinese minority in Malaysia, labeling them as racist and ultra kiasu for not showing gratitude towards the Barisan National or BN government. In T's column today, he again accused the quote unquote ultra kiasu of trying to manipulate Muslims to bury pass and claim that Malays in Singapore were not given decision-making positions or posts in the police, immigration or army. That's all from our ASEAN Daily today. Thank you for tuning in to 3 ASEAN. For more updates on Southeast Asia, please go to our website at 3 If you're on the go, you can always download our tuning app on your mobile. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels at Drian ASEAN and Drian ASEAN TV. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram. Stay tuned with ASEAN Daily, Monday to Friday, the same time at 12 to 1 p.m. GMT Plus 8. You're now listening to Drian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing.